how to start a YouTube channel in 2020. No BS. What they tell you. Just start. Increase your engagement. Why aren't you posting? Your videos must be quality. You don't need equipment. You have to just start. Make a thumbnail. Don't wait. Just start today. What they don't tell you. Sometimes you just gotta fake it till you make it. I need to set a date. You're telling me you have 10 comments on your YouTube video and you can't respond to not man one? <laughs> Come on now. If your lighting is trash, who's going to watch? Some of you think you are posting consistently and you're posting once a month. What's that girl that blew up on YouTube in the van? This is what I look like when I turn this joint off. I stuck to it. Really? That's all it was. Hey YouTube fam, it's your girl Gladys, aka Is That Your Hair, and welcome back to my channel. <laughs> if you're new here, welcome, I'm so happy to have you here, and if you've been rocking with me for a minute, what's up, what's good, and welcome back. So what you just watched was a quick recap of the part one to this video, how to start a YouTube channel in 2020, no BS. Check out that video after this video. It's not gonna be out of order. You can still watch this video throughout and watch part one after this one. Now, if you are new here, this is Small Talk Saturdays where I discuss things that are important to me and the viewers of my channel. For the month of June, and it looks like the month of July, I'll be discussing everything YouTube related. So make sure you hit that subscribe button, tap the notification bell so that you don't miss anything coming up. All right, so if you're ready to hear the rest of my tips on how to start a YouTube channel in 2020, keep on watching. Tip number six. Here's what they tell you. You have to read your analytics. Have you read your analytics? Look at your data. Data, data, data. If you're not reading your analytics, you're slipping. Here's what they don't tell you. If you are not used to looking at data, like let's say your job doesn't require you doing data, it can come across as very daunting to a lot of people. Me personally, I'm a teacher. I've been teaching for seven years and I have to look at the data of my students in order to know how to teach them, in order to differentiate for different skill levels and such. So for me, I'm used to looking at data. But for some people, they're not and they go to the analytics tab and they feel kind of lost. But really, the analytics tab tells you everything that you need to know about your channel. And if you are having trouble disseminating it, you need to do your research. I watch videos on analytics on YouTube. I've been doing that since I started my channel. I would watch and see how they show different things. I'll never forget when I was watching the YouTuber Erin On Demand, she showed how she does her analytics and then she showed where the revenue spot was. And I was like, Oh snap, how the hell did I miss that? The revenue, you can see it right there. You can see it from October. This is after I got monetized. And I was like, oh, okay. So you see what I mean? Just that little tidbit was able to help me because I was watching someone else. We can go look at my analytics right now. Get familiar with this dashboard, you guys. It tells you what you need to know. It talks about your latest video performance. This video didn't really do too well, but that's okay. <laughs> it tells you your current subscribers. If I go to channel analytics right over here, it gives you a general overview of how your channel is doing. It tells you your reach, right? It tells you how many impressions your channel is making overall. It's also telling you your level of engagement, your watch time overall as a channel. Now, if you wanna know about specific videos, you can go over here. You can choose any video. I have tons of videos, y'all. But let's see, I'll choose this video that has been doing well recently for my channel. Look, I have a total of 6,000 views. My watch time is this many hours. I gained 77 subscribers from this video and this is my estimated revenue, right? This is the first thing I see when clicking on the video for the analytics. I learned a lot from that. I go to my reach. I can see my click-through rate is 6.1%, which is good because out of these 15,000 people that saw my thumbnail, 6% clicked on it. I can also look here at my engagement and see that compared to my typical views in this period, this video did better and gained more views quicker than my other videos on my channel. And then over time, you can see it kind of balanced out with the rest of my videos. 
So you guys, please take the time to look at your analytics. I'm going to be doing a detailed video on like a beginner's guide to reading your analytics in 2020. If that is something that you are interested in, please let me know in the comments down below and I'll try to get that out to you sooner than later because I, I know it's something that people still struggle with and they want assistance. Tip number seven, here's what they tell you. What about your watch time? Oh my goodness, you have to get your watch time up. Your watch time is the most important thing on YouTube. Here's what they don't tell you. When it comes to your watch time, I would say the easiest way to get watch time hours when you're starting out is to go live. My goodness, why didn't somebody tell me this in the beginning? Why didn't somebody tell me? I know that I made my first 1,000 subscribers in the first three months and that was great, but it took me an additional six months to reach those 4,000 watch hours you need to get monetized. Now I know for my situation, getting monetized in nine months was still on the quicker side of things and that's fine. But I'm just like, if you can do it faster, I'm here to teach you the way. We don't have to make the same mistakes as former YouTubers and you don't have to make my same mistakes. And I wish I knew that going live would lead me to longer watch time. It just makes sense. When people go live these days, sometimes they're on there for an hour, two hours, three hours. Even if you just have 10 people watching you, 10 people watching three hours of your, of your content is 30 hours of watch time. 30 hours from just one session. Whereas maybe when you're first starting out in the beginning, you might have a five minute video and barely get two hours worth of watch time from that video, you know what I mean? I think going live is definitely something that needs to be pushed in the YouTube community and I see it being pushed out more and more, but I want everyone that is new to the YouTube platform and new to being a content creator to go live. Push yourself to go live. I would say, I mean, it depends, but I would have pushed myself to go live once a week if I knew what I knew now. So. Go live once a week and make sure you keep your live content public because if your content is not public, it will not count towards your watch hours. I'm telling you that right now, it won't count. So keep those lives public and trust me, you will definitely see your watch hours go up and you will be able to get monetized on your channel quicker. But since I didn't know that, here's what I did. I just uploaded as much as I possibly could. I did it like the standard YouTube way. I uploaded as many videos as I can. I think right now I have like over 150 videos. Through that is how I receive my watch hours. Now, I know some people will say, I've been on YouTube for two years and I haven't gotten monetized yet. How did you get monetized in nine months? I can explain that in more detail in another video. Again, that will probably go into my road to 10,000 subscribers video. And I'll say it again, if you missed it, if you wanna see that video, comment down below and let me know. Tip number eight, here's what they tell you. You don't have to stay organized. Oh my God, this is how I organize my channel. Stay organized on YouTube in 2020. You have to keep yourself organized. Here's what they don't tell you. You want to figure out a system in a way that helps you deliver your information in the most organized way as possible, but also you want to organize your platform that makes it very easy for your subscribers to receive the information that you are delivering. Here's what I did. When it came to keeping myself organized, I did start outlining my videos in the beginning. For a time when it comes to my hair content, I don't have to plan as thoroughly because I'm, I normally have the same script. And that's something that you need to kind of come up with. Come up with your general script of what you say in the beginning of the videos and at the end of the videos. And also just figure out your general flow. People like to know what comes next. I know for me, I generally have some type of catchy intro with the hair. I then introduce myself. Hey, to fam. It's your girl, Gladys. I greet my new and old subscribers. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I'm so happy to have you here. I give some details about the hair, and then I start going into pros and cons before I close out. That is my general outline. You have to figure out a script that works best for you. But the key, again, is organizing your content so it's easy for your subscribers. So one thing I think that is super important for all channels is to have playlists. Do not undermine the playlist feature. I think you can make as many playlists as you want. I don't think there's a cap on it. I have a playlist for me and blonde hair, me and bangs, 
me and human hair. I have a playlist for $20 Tuesdays. I have a playlist for small talk Saturdays. I have a playlist for so many different things. I probably have like 10 playlists right now. Use these playlists to your advantage and make sure you shout them out in your videos so that people know where to go. That also leads me to another point to make sure that your description box is organized. I'm telling you, I know I read description boxes, so I do assume that other people like to read them as well. If you organize in a way that makes it easy for your subscriber to find information, it will lead to more views, it will lead to more shares, and it will lead to channel growth. Also, when it comes to down the line where you're promoting different things and if you have like affiliate links, that is where your description box becomes key and you want it to look organized. This is what my description box looks like right now. I usually have some type of description here. And normally I try to make my descriptions more detailed, but I didn't do it for this one. I include some pertinent links. I include the info for the hair and then I include videos that they need to check out. I have my products I want people to check out and then I have all of my playlists here. I include my wig lookbooks, I have ways to connect with me, the music I use in the video. I have my description box very organized so that people can easily find information. And if someone asks me a question like, hey, what product did you use for this? I can direct them to my description box. Oh, hey, I would love to see more of your $20 Tuesday videos. The link is in my description box. Please make sure that you craft your description box in that way. Now, when you're in YouTube studio, you can go to the settings tab here and you can go to upload defaults and you can put what you want in your description box so that you have a standard that appears on every single video. These are the upload defaults. They do have different settings here that I don't use. I just stick with the basic info and I have this here so that way this appears automatically on every video before I upload. Tip number nine. Here's what they tell you. Don't worry, subscribers will come. Don't worry, you'll gain subscribers. Subscribers will always come. Here's what they don't tell you. Sometimes they don't come. Sometimes you don't get subscribers for like three months straight. <laughs> I mean, I'm laughing right now, but no, seriously. I noticed that a lot of content creators will kind of receive a standstill, especially in the beginning. People may not be seeing their content. Maybe they're not posting frequently, or if they are, they're just not being seen. YouTube is filled with so much information. You really have to put in the work to be seen. So you have to be patient. I know for me, there were times where I definitely noticed a lull in my view count and I did directly correlate it with Instagram at the time because I was pushing a lot of people from Instagram to YouTube and then I got shadow banned on Instagram and my feelings were so hurt because for a good solid two and a half months, almost three months, my views were just they were just trash and I just felt like I needed to be further along than I was. I felt like I was having a good momentum and then it just stopped and I was so discouraged. But I had to be patient during that time because I knew and knew that just because Instagram being my feeling source was not working out doesn't mean that I didn't continue posting videos and doing what I normally do and delivering good content. That's where the patience comes in. You can't just see that you're not getting views and just automatically feel like, all right, F it, I'm gonna give up. Like, no, you have to know within yourself, you have to have the confidence to say, hey, I deliver good work. I am consistently getting better and better with each video I post. So you know what? The subscribers may not be coming now, but trust and believe me, honey, they are going to come. And when they do, it's a wrap. <laughs> These are the things you have to tell yourself. You have to fill yourself with affirmations when dealing with YouTube because I'm telling you, YouTube is not for the faint of heart. It takes a lot of time, dedication, commitment, okay? If you would have told me on day one that I would have gained my first 10,000 in about a little over a year or so, I don't know if I would have believed you. But I still knew that I was putting out solid work and there is a stark difference between the videos I put out in the beginning and the videos I put out now. So I see my growth and I see that I've gotten better and I know that my subscribers see that as well. You have to see that in yourself too. So these are just some of my general tips for starting a YouTube channel in 2020. I sincerely hope that these tips were helpful for you. Please tell me what your favorite tip was. Maybe you have one, two, three. Let me know. Let's have a conversation in the comments down below. I would love to encourage some new creators on this platform. Maybe, you know, provide you with some extra assistance. 
I'm also always available to talk on Instagram. Is that your hair? With three R's at the end. Now again, I don't mind helping, but it is critical that you do your own research. That is something that I will leave you with today. Please do your own research. When I didn't know what certain analytics meant, I looked it up. When I didn't know what lighting I wanted to get, I looked it up. I didn't always want to ask someone else because I wanted to figure it out on my own. And I feel like everyone, when starting their channel, if they're serious, you should have that same type of drive. If you want me to deliver more content about YouTube, hit me in the comments down below and let me know. And if you're loving this video, like, comment, and subscribe to your girl. Show me some love. I really appreciate all of you for joining me for Small Talk Saturdays. It has been a joy. I'm really excited about it. And of course, if you want to check out some of my latest videos, you can see them over here to the right of me. Thank you all so much for joining me. Small Talk Saturdays is on and popping. And I will see you in the next one.